Second Kings chapter 4. I just want to go straight into the words now. I usually do a whole bunch of stuff before I preach, uh, but I'm going straight into the word tonight. Amen. And I want to uh, speak of what the Holy Ghost has given me for today. Hallelujah. For this day, for the people of God, um, there is a word from the Lord. It starts in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. When you have it, say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elijah, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. Uh -huh. And now thou knowest thy servants did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bound men of slaves. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thy what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thou hear me, hath not anything in the house except save a pot of oil. He said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors and empty the vessels, bar not a few. And when thou come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee. Thy son shall pour out unto all the vessels and thou shalt set aside of that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and her sons who brought the vessels to her. And she poured out. Came to pass that when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, bring me, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is no more vessels. And the oil stayed or stopped. Then she said, uh, then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil. Watch this. Go sell the oil. Pay thy debt. But not only pay thy debt, but you and your children going to live off the rest. I want to preach a miracle message tonight. I want to preach God is turning your little into a lot. Watch this. Hold on. That's not it, though. He's turning your little into a lot, and it's going to last. Look at somebody and prophesy to them on that and say, God is turning your little into a lot, and it's going to last. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, tonight. You ought to declare to somebody, say, this time it's going to last. Thank you, Jesus, on tonight. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers we love and appreciate you so much of the Power Church. Our church mother, Mother Moses, God bless you. So glad to see you in the house on tonight. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Amen. When we look at our text tonight, when we look at our text tonight, uh, I just want to go straight to the text tonight. I don't have much time tonight, and I want to get you out in case you want to uh, keep on celebrating uh, Mother's Day. But there, uh, there's something interesting. There's an interesting dynamic. We have a woman here that's now a widow, and she has now come into the situation uh, because her husband is dead, and it has put her in a very peculiar place. It's put her in a very peculiar place, and if you look at verse 1, she begins now to acknowledge her problem. She comes to the prophet. She comes to the prophet to acknowledge her husband, and when she comes to the prophet, she expresses to the prophet Elijah. She says, uh, listen, I need you to understand and to know that my husband is dead. He is dead. He is dead. He is dead. Not only is he dead, but here's the situation. He's dead. I'm alone. Not only am I alone by myself with my two sons, but but now there's a situation because evidently some things weren't taken care of that creditors are coming after me and they're threatening to take my sons. This is my situation. Not only am I a widow, not only have I experienced the law for somebody that was close to me, who I was connected to, who I was united with, but now there are people coming to me saying I owe them something and threatening to take something that I birthed. Have you ever been in a situation, watch this, where you felt the pressure? Oh my God. And this is what you got to be careful of. When you're in a pressure situation, you have to come to the place, watch this, where you understand God's peace is going to take over. So the thing you cannot do is panic under pressure. Look at somebody and say, under the pressure, please don't panic. And this is God's word for somebody tonight. In the midst of the pressure, if you learn how not to panic, but to pull on heaven, God is going to send peace in the midst of the situation. The type of peace I'm talking about is not just peace to your mind and peace to your
your spirit. He'll settle you. But he's about to bring peace to your situation. In other words, watch this. When you really learn how to not look and focus at your situation, God said the peace I'm about to bring to your situation is the peace of resolve. In other words, I'm going to settle it. I'm going to resolve it. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to pull it together. Watch this. And not only you are going to see it, but everybody else around you is going to know that the hand of God is on your life and that nobody but Jesus did it. Here she is. She experienced loss. Oh my God. She's experienced loss. She's in a bad situation. But watch what she does, Minister Bird. She runs to the prophet. I want to ask you a question like all the quiet folk tonight. Where do you run when you find yourself under pressure? Oh, let me ask you that again. You always say it that tonight. Where do you run when you find yourself under pressure? This is the day now, watch this, where people, when they're under pressure, when they have problems, would rather stay home and chill out. Oh, but that is not the answer or the way to get resolved to your problem and situation. She runs to the man of God because watch this. Watch what she saying, Minister Reese, she's saying, I need a word from the Lord. Here it is. When you got a problem, what you need is not more money. Watch this. What you, what you don't need are uh, things that, you, uh, that, that people would do for you, but what you need is a word from the Lord. And that's what she's saying, Prop, I need you to tell me what thus is saying or what God is saying for me in this season of my life. Uh, if we could get the saints back to, watch this, not being embarrassed about their situation and be honest with God and say, God, everything is not together in my life right now. My situation is not all the, you got to realize the church is supposed to be the hospital. It is the place where surgery is done. It is the place where things get fixed, where things are made better, get well, and can get healed. Y'all ain't in here tonight. And we got so many people now, watch this, because they're looking at or they're thinking about what people think about them, they no longer come with transparency and honesty, and they would rather come in church, sit with their hands folded, act like they don't need none from the Lord, and go right back out without an answer. The devil is a liar. Oh my God. May have problems, you may have pressure that, that you're under right now, but God didn't design it so you had to stay there. But if you can ever learn to run to God, if you ever can learn to run to the house of God, and when you come in the house of God, I ain't studying nobody on my road. I don't care if they're not praising, they're gonna think my praise is crazy. This Sunday, they're gonna think my worship is ridiculous this Sunday uh, because they really don't know my story and what I'm going through right now. The last thing you want to do when you're under pressure is keep your mouth closed. The last thing you want to do when you're under pressure is stop your worship. The last thing you want to do is hold back on your praise. But your best praise should be in your worst situation. Oh, your better worship. Y'all ain't in the house tonight. I'm about to go back here and take people's phones. Y'all don't like what I'm saying. Oh, the devil is a liar. Once you're distracted, when you need a word from the Lord. If I were to ask you what I preach about, you probably couldn't even tell me because you're distracted. And that's how the enemy gets you every time. But this woman wasn't distracted. She knew she needed something from the Lord. And she went to where she could get it. Look at your neighbor and say, run and get it. Run and get it. Run and get it. Do whatever you got to do to get wherever you need to be. Whether it's the prayer closet, whether it's the church house. Oh my God, every now and then you need to talk to some prayer warriors. You need to speak with an intercessor. Do whatever you got to do to get to the house of the Lord. She doesn't use the death of her husband as an excuse not to get a word from the Lord. Oh my God, I can relate to this woman. I can relate to losing. Can anyone in here relate to losing a loved one? Oh my God, I remember years ago when I lost my mother, when she transitioned to glory. And I did real good initially. But I remember a couple days after that, I'm sitting and we had a little website set up. And we had a little website, you know, just in remembrance for her. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the website and I'm just crying and just going in. And then, woo -hoo 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 
feeling just sad, down and out, and almost on the verge of depression. I was doing real good, but because I'm watching this, it's just bringing back a whole bunch of stuff. And you know how emotions can get the best of you, you know? And I was just having one of those moments. And in the midst of that moment, the Lord slapped me real good. He slapped me and said, boy, what are you doing? And I said, you know, I'm just having a moment. But he said, what kind of moment should, be, should you be having? Your mother might be gone, but God, you know why? I, you know, I did ask that question. You know, my mom should have maybe had 30 more years to live, but she's gone at 52. Uh, he said, that wasn't important. The point thing is, not only did she go on to be with glory, but though she's not here, I'm still here. Y'all missed it right there. He said, watch this. I need you to break this appointment. I need you to cancel this appointment with depression. Oh my God. Because what was about to happen is, I would have kept, kept coming back to the same place. Supposedly in remembrance. But what it was doing, it was opening me up for a place that the enemy wanted me in a place of discouragement and depression. And the Lord said, break this appointment with depression and make an appointment with the divine. What did you mean by that, Lord? I meant instead of coming to the computer to remember your mother, come to my presence and oh my God and seek my face. Because there is never no way, no matter what you're going through, that when you seek the Lord's face, whatever you're going through, it's no way you can't come out with joy. Oh my God. Look at your neighbor tonight and say, if you've been having appointments with depression, you need to break it tonight. There is no more date nights for depression and discouragement for those that love the Lord, for those that know the Lord. But God said, once you break it, I'll come in and I'll be the joy of your salvation. I need somebody to open their mouth in the building and declare it in the name of the Lord Jesus and say every appointment that's been set up for depression and discouragement, it's broken tonight in the name of Jesus. I will no longer refer or come back to this place. You see, it's a place that discourages you. It's a place uh, that brings you to depression. And if you can ever break the connection with the place, you're out of Shake somebody on your hand and say, my discouraging days are over because I broke the appointment. My depressing days are over because I broke the appointment. Oh my God, you ought to let the, know, the, the devil know that he is a liar and that he's already defeated and the rest of my days are going to speak, spit, enjoy unspeakable and it's going to be full of glory. Talk to yourself and say I got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, when you come to this text tonight, she says, creditor, I after me, which says to me there was some unfinished business that something her husband did not take care of before he died. Uh, let me, let me, let me just put a little uh, a pin in it right here. I know it's Mother Day, but I want to talk to some men. Men of God that's on their way to be married. Married, whatever you are. Make sure you handle your business. So if you leave before your wife leaves, she's not stuck with a whole bunch of bills. I wish somebody would talk back to me in here. Oh my God. Have you ever been in a situation where, watch this, uh, you had no problem if you was handling bills or that you created yourself. But it's a whole nother dynamic when you're handling somebody else's. Oh my God. And they threatening to come take yours. Oh my God, and that's kind of the situation that this woman is in right now. She's in a situation, watch this, because of what her husband didn't take care of. Now she's paying for it, and her children are being threatened after being taken away from her. And she runs to the prophet and says, watch this, watch what she says to the prophet. She says, not only do I need help, but I want you to understand that my husband, who he was, he was connected and have a good rapport with you. Oh my God. 
God. It's important these days, watch this, uh, your connections, but the kind of rapport that you have with your connections. What do people say about you when you ain't around them? Hmm. Look at somebody, look at somebody, ask them a question. How are you when we don't see you? You know, we can put a good face in church. Well, oh my God, everybody can act saved in church. But how do you act when you get outside these four walls? She says he has, she had, he had a good rapport with you. Now, oh my God, the prophet says, what shall I do for you? And she explains her situation. And now watch what the prophet does. Man of God, watch what the prophet does. The prophet, when he gives his answer, he doesn't say to her, uh, you know, uh, uh, just wait three days and a miracle is just going to come to your house. He doesn't do that type of thing. But watch this. He gives her some direction. Let me say it again. He gives her some direction. Watch this. In order to get her miracle, he says to her, or he asks her a question first, says, what do you have in your house? And when she begins to answer, she says, I don't really have anything. Oh, wait, I just remembered. I do have a little oil. I really don't have nothing that probably would be worth anything. I got bills I need to pay. There's some stuff I need to take care of, but I, I do have something. I, don't, I, I, I got a little bit of oil. And watch what he says. He says, now go take that oil. And what I need you to do is take it. Watch it. I need you to go out. I need you to borrow some pots. Take those pots. Use those pots. Take that oil. Fill those pots up and do what you need to do after you fill all those pots up. What are you talking about to me? I got to pay debt. Oh my God. And the first thing you tell me to do is to borrow something. Oh my God. Uh, what, uh, what God would challenge you with in this day and season of you needing a miracle in your life, He will challenge you with direction. The hardest thing for church people, probably any people, to follow in this season is direction. And isn't it amazing, you know, about my, you know, I can sit here, I can tell people to open their mouth, I can tell them to shout, and I'll tell you, I see things in the Holy Ghost, so I'm telling them to do it for a reason. I'm telling you to say certain things. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, just the simplest direction, they just won't follow it because they don't see the importance and the value of it. But when your miracle is at stake, many times before God puts the miracle or reveals what he's about to do, he wants to see if you can follow directions. Oh, my God. Watch this. Let me say it like this. Sometimes God wants to see before I put it to you or before I give it to you, I want to see what you're willing to put in it. In other words, watch this. Uh, before I give you anything, I want to see how bad do you want it? And do you want it bad enough that you're willing to take your time and effort to do something to get your miracle? Let me say it like this. Y'all ain't in here tonight. How bad do you really want it? Because most people want stuff thrown in their lap. But when God challenges them to do something, now we got a problem. Oh my God, but is there anybody in this season that says, I want whatever God God for me so bad that whatever he tells me to do, I'm going to do it. Oh my God, it will be the day that he challenges you to give me praise. Unadulterated praise. And it'll be the day you don't feel like praising. He'll challenge you to get on your knees and pray. And you feel like there is not an intercessor or a warrior on the inside of you. What are you willing to do? Look at your neighbor tonight and ask them a question because they're getting real comfortable right about now. Oh my God. They, uh, they, I didn't come for this type of word tonight. I, I just came to receive from the Lord. But before you receive, God wants to know what are you willing to put out. Look at your neighbor and say, what are you willing to give in this season? What are you willing to do in this season? How bad do you really? I can tell people that want what they need. I can tell people that really want God. They are not worried about what other people got on. They're not worried about people on their road. Oh my God, they're not worried about how they look. They're not concerned about how they feel. But what God, whatever 
whatever it takes by any means necessary I'm going to do whatever you tell me to do in order to get this next breakthrough look at somebody on your own maybe y'all ain't willing but I'll talk to the three people that's willing in this season that whatever God directs me to do here it is tonight if you want to see his divine you've got to follow his derivatives you've got to follow his directions how crazy did how crazy did the children of Israel look when they were walking around the wall of Jericho not making any noise just walking around a big old wall and the wall ain't moving but we just walking because that's what we was instructed to do that's what God told us to do and God told us if we were obedient that this wall gonna come down how crazy did they look oh my god ask your neighbor tonight what are you willing to do he says you go do this and God will do this oh my god this is the season that somebody needs to jump up that somebody needs to get out of the place of uncomfortable and complacency and understand there are not things coming some things are not going to come into my life until I get up and do something what did God tell you to do in this season oh I need obedient folk in this season I need people that are faithful to my word that will not only hear my word because we hear the word but we're not doers of the word but faith works best not only when you hear the word but when you do the word look at somebody and say just do it just do it just do it she said he tells her he says go get some pots boiling and when you come into the house when you come back to your place I need you to start pouring into this is what she does and this is where I get my shot tonight that when she get, borrows the pots she borrows as much as she can she comes into the house and she begins to pour when she comes into the house she does one specific thing which I love it I love it I love it now she shuts the door and I begin to ask God I said God why did she have to shut the door and God said she had to shut the door because watch this there was no other people that could handle going into this place with her because they would not understand what she was doing and she would ultimately entertain another opinion and sometimes when God is asking you to do things in your life for your breakthrough and your miracle it's going to look stupid it's going to look crazy it's going to look insane it's going to look a little retarded and what she didn't need in this season of her life she didn't need anybody in her life telling her you deranged, delirious and stupid and what you doing ain't going to work so she had to shut the door and the only people that could go behind the door with her was they two sons why could well, they the only people that could go with her because they needed a miracle too here it is tonight you need people in this season uh, that watches that need the same thing that you need uh, because they ultimately can understand what you're doing in the spirit uh, because we all need the same thing uh, oh my god shake somebody's hand on your row if you can reach them if you can stand there tonight uh, and say I hope you're that person uh, that's going after what I'm going for in this season uh, because I'm about to shut the door and what I'm about to do in this season it's going to look deranged, delirious it's going to look crazy and I don't need any contrary opinions oh my God, coming against me telling me what I'm doing ain't going to work because I believe the word of the Lord is there anybody in the house tonight that say no matter how crazy it looks, no matter how deranged it may seem if God said it I got to do it, here it is God's about to bring elevation. I wish I had five people tonight. Uh, that y'all are not in here tonight. Uh, where are the people at tonight? Uh, that understand that sometimes what God's going to ask you to do. Uh, what God will expect for you to do. Uh, it might cause you uh, to be made fun of. Uh, it might humiliate you. But here's the word tonight. Uh, if you can get beyond uh, humiliation. Uh, and what you think you look like. Uh, you are about to see a miracle come to your life. Sometimes, sometimes God want to bring you to a breakdown point. Sometimes God brings you to a minimal point. He brings you to a point where it makes you 
look like you're crazy, out of your mind, humiliated. Oh my God, it looks like you're going down the wrong road. How crazy do I look? Borrowing some vessels and I already owe people. How crazy do I look? Taking a little oil and pouring it into some empty vessels. How crazy do I look? But God is about to take my crazy and bring sanity to it. Look at somebody and tell them, I don't care what you think about me. They think you're crazy in this season. They think you're delirious. Watch this. They think you're not hearing God. I wish I had my church tonight. They think, oh my God. They think, watch this, that God ain't speaking to you. Surely, surely they don't have a word from the Lord. But sometimes when you have a word from the Lord, it will humiliate you. It will make you look crazy. And God is trying to find some people that enough that say, Lord, whatever you tell me to do in this season, I don't care how crazy, I owe my God. They can say what they want to say about me, but they don't have the word for my life anyway. Only what you see, oh my God, is going to come to pass. Shake somebody's hand and ask, how bad do you want it? Oh my God, are you willing to look crazy? Are you willing to look like you lost control? Are you willing to look like that things ain't going the way that it should be? Are you willing to risk people talking about you and making fun of you? Oh my, I love the season that God got me in because God has confirmed for me and for this ministry that we're about to see overflow. And it seemed like right at the time that God said overflow through the prophet and through various people that don't even know me. Seemed like people started calling me and saying, you know, it's my season uh, uh, to, to leave the ministry. Y'all you know how people do that. They don't give you a real clear and concise answer. They just, you know, they just say, you know, that's, that's how they say it now, you know, and different things. And, and it seemed like when I started getting the word from the Lord, and I believed the word from the Lord, now it seems like, oh my God, the results are contrary to what God said. Oh my God, and everybody's watching that. They see us on Facebook Live. You know, they see the few moves that we make. And they wonder if our church is stable. Oh, but the devil is a liar. And my assistant pastor will tell you, we ain't never moved from a building because we couldn't pay the bills. Oh my God, that ain't never been our reason for moving from a building. Oh my God, we've always paid bills on time, ahead of time, and we always help the ministries that were in that I see another logo shot. The devil's be shut down tonight. But it seems like when the word of God was cast out, now everybody seems like nobody want to hang out no more. And this would be the wrong time to leave because now the word of God is being confirmed. And so now the enemy wants to play tricks on me and say, look how they looking at you. Look what they saying about you. And you know, I've had a few friends that look and look out for me. And you know, they tell me what other people are saying. But in spite of what everybody else is saying, I still believe the word of the Lord. And I sit in this little 68 seat building uh, in Jonesboro. And I preach like it's a thousand. Because I believe the word of the Lord. Even when the people don't say amen and act like they ain't not responsive. I still sweat my suits out. Because I preach it to a vision. I preach it to a word. Oh my God, but look to the hills from where coming. 
people, in your broken place, in your, oh my God, in your humiliated place. Look at somebody and say, I know what it is to be humiliated because the word is on my life. They looking at you like, what you doing? Why you doing it? They even say to you, why you wasting your time? But you got to let them know the word of the Lord shall come to pass. Just give me a few days and you're going to see something manifest. Just give me a few days and you're going to see something revealed. They may laugh at you now, but if they laugh, shut the door. They may talk about you now, but if they talk about you, shut the door. They may not understand it, but even if they don't understand it, shut the door. And I shut the door to everybody that's not willing to walk in this season where God called me to. I shut the door to people that will believe the word of the Lord for my life. Talk to yourself and say tonight we're shutting the door to everything that opposes our destiny. Tonight we're shutting the door. Christ, but tell me the next, I still got a little something 
everybody. You always want to pray. You always want to talk in front of everybody. But every now and then, you got to shut the door and wind it up. But do I have anybody that's been praying in the closet? Do I have anybody that's been worshiping in private? God said, get ready. Y'all ain't ready. Look at somebody and say, neighbor, get ready. Because God is about to open up. God is about to take your private session and make it open this place. Tell them you're praying in private. You're fasting in private. You're speaking in private. Yada mama kosha. Your private praise is not in vain. God is about to do it for you tonight. Shake somebody's head real good and say, God is about to take your look and make it a lot. And it's gonna last. Watch this. So they tell us now, you know, basically, you know, you got to do some financial things. You go through the courses and you do all this saving and different things like that. But according to this text, if you follow God, if you believe God, if you follow his direction, God can erase some debt. God can pay your bills. Keep me, even after this. Go and 
Shout 
Now you know, y'all know y'all pastor, and you know we've been speaking, and we've been declaring some things. And look at somebody say, things been happening. I'm talking about authentic testimonies of stuff only the Lord could do. Look at your neighbor and say, if this is ever a time to praise him, it's a time to praise him right now. Because if you obey God,
turning it into a lie. Man, that's my declaration for the rest of the week. Every day when I get up in the morning, God, I believe you're taking my word and turn it into a lie. And it's gone. Some of you have been feeling overwhelmed right now, but God is saying, I'm taking the pressure off and I'm taking you a little. The, pre the pressure is being released tonight. Lift those hands all over the building. The pressure is being released tonight. The Holy Ghost is telling me to say that. The pressure is being released tonight. The pressure is being released tonight. Hey, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Let it handle it tonight. Like you ain't never worshiped him before. Hallelujah. 